All right guys, so in today's, okay, I'll stop fooling around. Let's get right into the video. If you notice, I actually got some storage containers from Ikea and labeled them. I don't know what it is, but labeling and making the office better just makes me so much more productive and I, I kind of geek out about it. But let's jump right into today's video, guys. I have my little cheat sheet up here. And basically I want to run down all these tips as quick as possible so I don't bore you. Um, so let's hop right into the first one, which is properly planning the engagement session from the start. Okay, so planning can be uh, sometimes like forgot about. I use Tave as my CRM and it helps me and have like specific dates in correlation to the wedding where I'll be like, okay, it's time to start planning the engagement session. Or sometimes a couple will just initiate it first if they want it like really soon or like as soon as they book with you. Um, but basically planning should be usually where it's at, what they're wearing. And honestly, maybe for me, like I'm trying to incorporate like actually having like lunch or dinner with my couples after to like talk about the timeline in person rather than through like 107 emails. Um, obviously if you're like a year and a half out, this probably wouldn't work. But if you're like three months out or six months out or five months out, then yeah, you probably can at least get the timeline in you know correlation to some parts of the day. But basically for me, what I'm planning is um, what they're wearing. I give them suggestions. I, you can't control what they wear, um, but I give them suggestions. Like for the guy, maybe like his fancy outfit could be like a pair of slacks, like a tucked in shirt, like a long sleeve shirt, or you know, for his casual, it could be like a pair of like khaki pants or shorts with like a polo or something. I always tell them two outfits, no matter what. If it's a long three hour shoot with like two, three locations, three could work. But if it's like one spot, two is definitely perfect. I never shoot the same outfit in the same exact spot, um, unless the couple wants that. I always try to like make them a little bit different. Um, but basically, always adjusting two outfits, always planning a location that resonates to them. You know, I had a friend that just did an engagement session in a Starbucks, like after hours at like 10 p.m. at night, um, because that's where they met and that's where a, a huge portion of their story began. So I, I try to choose a place that resonates with the couple. You can start with this by just simply asking like, what do you guys do for fun? Um, do you go camping a lot? Okay, well, where's your favorite campsite? You wanna do it there? Like just any sort of idea that kind of resonates with the couple. So that's all about planning guys. It's crucial. I would start implementing proper planning like right now. Okay, the second thing that is like really important, I've actually just now figured out how much imp how impactful this is on my engagement sessions, and it's setting the tone early. I think that a lot of times, um, if you want a session to go the, uh, a certain way, set the tone for that like right from the rip. Like, don't let it be you know halfway through the session where you're trying to be like this outgoing, playful person, or if you're very introverted, you know whatever. But this also starts before the shoot even happens. So you know. For example, I set the turn early by being excited about actually doing the engagement session or being excited about choosing a location because if you go to a crappy location with like a couple that you've like never met before, it can just be kind of like eh, but if you're doing it with, you know, a couple that you've had multiple emails with, maybe a few phone calls, you've helped them pick their outfits, you know, stuff like that, you've helped them pick the spot, it can just make for a very enjoyable engagement session. Um, for me, I don't try to over elaborate my engagement session, so you won't see me bringing a very large off-camera flash setup. It's usually just two cameras, three lenses, and maybe my drone if I want to get like some aerials. And I just try to simplify it as much as I can while creating a really good experience for the couple. All right, the third thing that I have, I would say in the last six months, tried to start doing more is um, just like prompts and um, creative posing that's not like, stand right here, don't move. You know, and they're like kissing each other for like six minutes as you change lenses and, you know, I just, I don't know. I, I, I think that creating um, situations where there's actual motion in the pictures, when they see that image on social media, like printed out at their wedding, they're gonna look at that image and not remember like, the awkward stiff pose, but they're gonna remember that like the laugh that they have with each other or the smile that they have with each other or the cuddles or the warmth or and stuff like that. So creating really good emotion through creative posing, prompts, things to get them laughing um, will just create way better images for you because they don't look as, you know, overly posed or baked. If that's your style, then go for it. It all depends on your brand. Um, if you want to be very adventurous and, you know, I, there's a photographer on Instagram that all of his like portrait sessions with his couples, they're like completely naked in, which is like completely crazy, but he's created a very strong brand around that type of photography. So find the type that you love and that you love shooting and creating and look at the qualities of it and the aspects and use that to you know set the tone and use prompts to help you um, you know implement that style of photography that you want to uh, show to your couples.
Okay, the next thing I wanna talk about is honestly just letting your couple like be themselves. I think that with social media being so prominent in the world now, um, I think that photographers a lot of time, even videographers, they get so focused on creating stuff that will literally get likes and engagement and followers um, and just look beautiful on your Instagram feed that I think they forget to let the couples um, be themselves and that the ultimate goal is to create work that your couples are gonna love, create work that resonates with them rather than just will look good on your Instagram feed. So, you know, if your couple wants to lick each other's face from top to bottom all day in their engagement session, let them do that. Like you're gonna create images that they were gonna love if that's what they're doing, obviously. Um, obviously put them in, you know, I always try to direct in, you know, emotion-based, put them in good light, do stuff that like is your job. Um, but when it comes to if you're doing a pose and they randomly change up and like start cuddling or do something like that, don't interrupt them and be like, oh, like, no, 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 go back to that other pose. Like, let them be them. Like, when they look at that picture, they're gonna remember that because that's like, like literally what they did, not because you were like, oh, change and do this. You know, you want it to flow in a way that is um, enjoyable for the couple and you, but let them be themselves. Let them be themselves, guys. Like, I would hate to show up at a shoot and they, and like, be cuddling on my girl and the photographer's like, no, stand straight. And I'm like, what? Okay, so the last thing is gonna be initially directing like from the start. It kind of goes hand in hand with um, setting the tone, but it's more of like the knowledge based stuff. Um, so I always ask the, the, the you know bride to be like, do you like your hair in front of your shoulders? Do you like like one hair behind your back? Like, do you have a side preference? Uh, do you don't like your nose? Like, do you hate angles from down low? Like, these are like all weird things I've heard like over the, the few past years of doing engagement sessions and it's good to know from the start, you would hate to be 20 minutes into an engagement session and the bride's like just in passing references like, oh, like I hate my hair behind my back. And you're like looking at your picture on your camera and you're like, oh, it's weird to have her hair behind her back in like every picture. You know, you don't want that to happen. For the groom, it could be stuff as like, um, I've seen times where like the groom hates how tall he is or short he is. Um, so you can obviously try to like get away. Maybe if they're, if the groom's short and the bride's taller, maybe have them sitting for a lot or stuff like that. Maybe do like a picnic style engagement session. Um, just knowing stuff that they don't like or are insecure about, that way you're not photograph, you not. That way you're not photographing these things um, that your couples don't like about themselves. Even as much as you want to talk them up and make them feel beautiful and comfortable, um, if I still don't like my nose, I probably won't want side angles if like my nose is big or maybe I don't smile with my teeth if I don't have like straight teeth or something like that. So know these things guys, it's really crucial for creating beautiful pictures for your couples. Thank you so much for watching. Please give this channel, um, this channel, I don't know why I would say that like that. Subscribe to the channel down below. I'm gonna be posting again weekly, um, including client work. Is that cheating guys? I posted a wedding video last week. Does that count as cheating? I don't know. Um, but definitely give the channel a subscribe and like this video and I'll see you guys in the next video. Hopefully the table will be done. I have no clue. Broke this watch at the gym. Did you notice it already? I'm trying to make it into a style. We'll see, but thanks for watching guys.